Alright, my name is Tanner Milliken and I am in a group with Kennedy Patterson and Jacob Loomis and we chose to do celiac disease. So first we're going to start off with kind of an overview. Uh, celiac disease is an immune reaction to eating gluten. It affects the small intestines and it prevents the small intestines lining to absorb nutrients properly. Next, the er, causes. The main cause, like precise cause is unknown, but the main thing is eating gluten. Studies have also shown that gut bacteria and emotional stress has something to do with it. However, the main cause is eating gluten. When the body's immune system overreacts to gluten in food, the reaction damages the tiny hair-like projections called villi in the, small, in the small intestines. The villi absorb vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients from the food that you eat. So if the villi are damaged, you can't get enough nutrients no matter how much food you eat. Next are the symptoms. Uh, unexpected weight loss, headaches, fatigue, joint pain, and then GI issues include the stomach cramps, gas and bloating, nausea and vomiting, chronic diarrhea, and constipation. Now for the diagnosis, there's two tests that we're going to run and they're both blood tests. The first one is a serology test. The serology test looks for antibodies in your blood. Elevated levels of certain antibody protein indicate an immune reaction to gluten. And then genetic testing for human leukocytes, antigens can be used to rule out celiac disease because it's a genetic type disease. And then if we find out that you have celiac disease, the following tests will be ordered, which are the endoscopy and capsule endoscopy. An endoscopy test uses a long tube with a tiny camera that they put into your mouth and passes through your, down your throat. The camera enables your doctor to view your small intestines and take small tissue samples to analyze the damage to the villi. And then a capsule endoscopy is a test used by a tiny wireless camera to take pictures of your entire small intestines. The camera sits inside a vitamin-sized capsule which you swallow. And as the capsule travels through your digestive tract, the camera takes thousands of pictures that are transmitted to a recorder. Next is treatment. There's nothing specific you can do for treatment. However, there's some things that can help. Uh, gluten-free diets are important, so you just avoid gluten pretty much. And foods that have gluten are like breads types of stuff and starches and other things like that. Next is vitamins and supplements. You're gonna need to take vitamins and supplements because your villi aren't absorbing all of the nutrients that they need. And this will all start with going through a dietitian's plan, so you'll be hooked up with one of our dietitians and they'll help you get a diet that will be healthy for you. And then finally, medications to control intestinal inflammation. We saw on the symptoms slide that there's a lot of GI issues, so this will help with those things. Next are risk factors. These people are at risk, and these are the family members of a person with celiac disease, type 1 diabetics, people with Down syndrome or Turner syndrome, auto autoimmune thyroid disease, microscopic colitis, and Addison's disease. And then prevention. Like I said, there's not a ton you can do to prevent it. However, the best things you can do are get tested to see if you have it. If foods with gluten in them are making you feel sick, then it's probably best to get tested. And then you'll have to go to an alternative diet with a, the help of your dietitians, and then they're gonna tell you to avoid gluten-free foods. And then also avoid cross-contamination, so make sure you're cleaning your dishes really well, your silverware, and stuff like that. And then for the prognosis and follow-up, without diagnosis and treatment, celiac disease is ultimately fatal to 10 to 30% of people. Currently, the outcome is rare, and as most people do well, as long as they avoid gluten, following a gluten-free diet heals the damage to the intestine and prevents further damage. And then you should see your physician three to six months after your initial diagnosis and annually thereafter that to identify nutritional deficiencies, address symptoms you may still be experiencing, and confirm your adherence to the gluten-free diet. Patients with a strict gluten-free diet should have a negative anti-TCG IgA test after the six to 12 month mark. Now I got my resources from the Mayo Clinic, but if you have any other questions, you can either visit there or ask me. Thank you.